Good morning, and welcome to the celebration of the Eucharist. In today's gospel, Jesus tells us clearly, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. What a blessing we are here to do just what he said and participate in the Eucharist. Please join us in singing and greet Christ in our peace. Father Vincent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. With your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most previous fault. Therefore I ask blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to our Lord and God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Grant we pray, Almighty God, that we who have come to know the grace of the Lord's resurrection may to the love of the Spirit ourselves rise to newness of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing murderous <laughs> threats against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him, for the letters to the synagogues in Damascus, that if he should find any men or women who belong to the way, he might bring them back to Jerusalem in chains. On his journey, as he was nearing Damascus, a light from the sky suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, who are you, sir? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go to, into the city, and you will be told 
what you must do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, for they heard the voice but could see no one. Saul got up from the ground. When he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days he was unable to see. He either n neither ate nor drank. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. And the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. He answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and ask at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is there praying. <laughs> and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias. Come in and lay his hands on him, that he will, may regain his sight. But Ananias replied, Lord, I have heard many sources about this man. What evil things he has done to your holy ones in Jerusalem. And he, here he has authority from the chief priest to imprison all who can call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for this man is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name from Gentiles, kings, and children of Israel. I will show him what he will have to suffer for my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. Laying his hands on him, he said, Soul, my brother, the Lord has sent me. Jesus, who appeared to you on the way by which you came, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately things like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. He got up and was baptized. And when he had eaten, he recovered his strength. He stayed some days with the disciples in Damascus. And he began at once to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues. And he is the Son of the God, the Lord, Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For his steadfast is his kindness towards us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out, Go out to, to all, all the world and tell the good news. Lord be with you. And with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. 
these things he said while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Friends, we just listened to the story of the conversion of St. Paul in the first reading. So, who is St. Paul? Before having his name changed to Paul, his name was Saul. He was a brilliant young man with a bright future. His parents sent Paul, sent Saul to the best school in town, and he studied under one of the greatest teachers of the Jewish nation, named Gamaliel. So, Saint, so Saint, uh, Paul has a beginning just like you. You are sent to the best school in town study under the best teachers. So we see that if St. Paul continue his journey, he would become even a better rabbi than his teacher. And when he grow up, so beside being a Jewish rabbi, he was a tent maker. And the first time St. Paul was mentioned in the Bible was at the persecution of St. Stephen. So when St. Stephen was stoned to death for preaching the name of Jesus, we heard that the witnesses laid down their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. Saul was a young Jewish rabbi who wanted to defend his Jewish faith, and he did so by persecuting followers of Jesus. He would enter house after house and drag out men and women who believe in Jesus and handed them to the authority. And he has done so many evil things to the early church. His life forever changed because of one question when he met the risen Lord. So, so why are you persecuting me? We notice that Jesus didn't say, why are you persecuting my disciples? But he said, why are you persecuting me? because Jesus and his disciples are inseparable. Jesus is the head and the disciples, the church is the body. The head and the body are one. And then after meeting with Jesus, Saul was made blind. He couldn't see any longer. So for three days, he was unable to see and neither ate nor drink. Then a d disciple named Ananias was sent to lay his hand on the head of Saul to heal him. And Saul got up and was baptized and he had eaten and recovered his strength. He stayed some days with the disciples in Damascus, and he began at once to proclaim Jesus, to bring the joy of the gospel to others. So we may ask ourselves, why was Saul made blind? Because Saul needed to learn humility. He was a brilliant young man, but he was also very prideful. He thought he knew everything. So that, that's why 
he was made blind so that he may experience the darkness of his ignorance, so that he may be able to see the light of Christ. This blindness made him humble and reminded him of his need to learn to lean on God. So was chosen an instrument, but before he could get started, he needed to be tested. And we noticed that after Saul's baptism, his name was changed from Saul to Paul. The name Paul means smallness or humility. He was humble. So my friends, each and every one of us here is a chosen instrument to bring Jesus to others. Jesus wants us to talk about him in our words and our deeds. But in order to do so, first of all, we need to learn. We need to learn to pray, just like St. Paul learned to pray in his school. We need to learn from St. Paul to study hard, to become knowledgeable of God and his love for us. And then we will be sent out like St. Paul and the disciples to go and tell the good news to all over the world. We see that after his baptism, Paul began at once to proclaim Jesus. He started immediately without any hesitation. That's why we need to do, we need to learn from St. Paul. And may St. Paul pray for us that we may be chosen instruments of God, sharing the light of Christ to the world. Amen. As we prepare our hearts to be in union with Christ in the Holy Eucharist, we offer our prayers to the Lord. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Amen, Father Dan, Father Vincent, and all our deacons, that they may be blessed with good health and joy in their ministry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That during this Easter season, we will constantly remember the resurrection of our Lord and share the joy it brings with everyone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick and suffering, that our risen Lord will bring them peace and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our students in pre-K 4, that their joy and love of Christ would overflow to everyone who meets them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our seventh graders who are on retreat this weekend, for their hearts to be open to receive all the graces the Lord has in store for them, and for the Holy Spirit to bless our retreat team who is giving of themselves to help our seventh graders know the love of our Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For a birthday intention for Fraser A. Bridges III, for whom this Mass is offered, for all the attentions held in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. God, our Father, we ask that you hear our prayers and look with favor upon them. Through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord send the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory in his name and the goodness of this holy church. Graciously sanctify this gift, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to our Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of, this, of his body, he brought the sacrifices of all to fulfillment in the reality, reality of the cross, and by commanding himself to you for our salvation, show himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exhaust in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that for taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into a light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you to the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. To him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace nowadays, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of the church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter the mind. Boldly say the word, and so shall be healed.
be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. For those who aren't able to receive the Holy Eucharist today, we offer this prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you're present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I myself holy to you. Never, per, never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us worth in charity to Christ our Lord. We would like to thank all of our students for participating in this Mass and a special thank to our fifth graders who hosted this Mass very well and also to our third graders who sing in the choir. So please help us to thank our, our fifth and third graders. We also want to thank to all of the parents who joined us to honor our pre-K-4 at this Mass today. I know that uh, I think when I leave St. Margaret Mary this summer, mm. one of the things I will miss the most is to mm -hmm. celebrating the school Mass with you. So uh, I always have a school, uh, a school with me in the past mm. six years. The church that I am going to also have a school, but it's a preschool. So two, three, four years old. I think I'm going to have them to go to Mass, doing school Mass with our preschool students. And to our seven graders, we will keep you in our prayers this weekend as you go to your retreat this weekend. And today we will pass our vocations course from K3 Mrs. Sammy's class to pre-K4-1, Mrs. Ganucho's class. So please send your students to give and receive the cross. And now we pray the vocation's prayer. I glorify you, God, in all that I do. In mind, body, spirit, I give my best to you. Help me to follow your will, no matter the call. Sister, brother, and priest, I promise my all. If you call me to marriage, I promise to love. And to teach my own children to see grace from above. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was well beginning, and it's now, it shall be world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. Have your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. St. Michael, Michael the Archangel, Angel, defend, defend us in battle. battle. Be our, our protection against the wickedness, wickedness and snares of the devil. devil. May, May God, God rebuke him, we humbly pray. pray. And do thou, the Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the root of souls. Amen. need 
Chargers white and red and blue, we pray things they can do. We stand up for each other, for friendships good and true. For in God our faith and unity, at SMF we see. Holy standards are direct. Send them. 